Okay, up to this point, we know um, how to do a GCF. A GCF works in any problem, no matter what it looks like. We also know a simple ABC. A simple ABC means the number in front is a one and it's got three parts to it. Uh, grouping has to have four parts to it. And then uh, complex ABC has to have three parts to it with the number that's in front other than one and that can't be the GCF. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at uh, special binomials. A special binomial, look right here in the title, a binomial just means two terms. So there are two different types that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about squares and cubes. So we're going to start off with the difference of squares and talk about what the features of that problem look like. So if you look at that blue problem down below, it's x squared minus 25. Um, first thing is, it is a binomial. So it does have two terms. Second, there has to be a subtraction. That's why it's called a difference of squares. In math, difference means subtract. The last thing that has to occur, they have to be perfect squares. So in terms of your letter, it means that your letter has to have uh, an even exponent, and it means that your number has to be like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, and so on. Now, if you don't know what your perfect squares all are, all you have to do is square root. If the square root doesn't give you a decimal, it's a perfect square. Now, if you follow the pattern, these things all have a pattern. So once you can recognize them, it's not a whole lot of work to do. So if you notice what the answer is going to look like, it's got an A and a B with uh, really no exponents. Then it's got a second set of an A and a B. And then the only difference is like the stuff inside is the same, except one's a plus and one's a minus. So really, if you could just come up with the first parentheses, the second parentheses is an exact copy and you just change the sign. So in this problem, uh, you could do this as a simple ABC because technically it is. It's got a one in front. The only thing is the B is missing, and that's because it's zero. So if you were going to make the list for 25, you'd have to find two numbers that multiply to give you zero, which would be plus five and minus five. Now I'm going to show you a faster way to do it, though. If you can recognize the difference of squares, all you have to do is square root each individual term without including the minus. Don't put the minus on the inside. So what ends up happening is the first part gives you an x, the second part gives you a five. So if you know the first set of parentheses, that means you know the second set of parentheses. The only difference between the two is one's plus and one's minus. There's your answer. So as you do these problems, you have to check to see if there is a perfect square. That means you can square root them. So can I square root p squared? Yes, the answer is p. Can I square root 36? Yes, the answer is 6. So this is the difference of squares. So p and 6 plus and minus, that's your answer. So what if the, what if the x has a number in front? First thing I would check is, could you still square root it? So yes, nine is a perfect square. So that becomes three and x. They stay together. They're together inside the square root, so they stay together in this parentheses. Then I square root the one, and the answer is one. So this gives me another three x and one, and then I put a plus and a minus, and that's my answer. Same thing with the next one. I square root the entire thing, so that gives me two n. Square root this one, that gives me seven. So that just leaves me with a plus and a minus with two n and seven on the inside. Now, what you should start to do, though, in every single problem, is you should start to see if there's a perfect, uh, not a perfect square, but a, a, a GCF, like in this one. If I square root that, it doesn't work. It's a decimal. So we can't do that. So that means that there's a GCF in this problem, and a lot of times, it's that front number. Um, not always a front number, but a lot of times it is. So if I take out the 3, now this is n squared minus 25, and now I have my difference of squares. So my difference of squares turns into two more parentheses n and 5, n and 5, 1's a plus, 1's a minus, and then just don't forget about 3 in front. There's your answer. Now if you look at the next one, the next one, um, it's, uh, it's, not a, it's not the type we've been talking about. It's not a difference of squares. But if you notice, the exponent is higher. This one right here, this is a simple ABC. We talked about when that's x to the 4, we just split it up evenly. So I put x2 and x2. So I have to find two numbers that multiply to 81 and add to negative 18. So that ends up being 9 and 9, and to be a negative 18 has to be negative 9 and negative 9, and now that multiplies to positive 81. Well, guys, here's the catch with this stuff. If your problem still has an exponent, there's a chance you could do a difference in squares. So uh, technically, this first one can break down into x plus 3 and x minus 3, and then the second one can break down into x plus 3 and x minus 3 again. Now, had any of those been a plus, we couldn't do it. 
Because this rule only works if there's a minus in the middle. Or, yeah, in the middle. So our answer in this one would have four parentheses. Now what we have here is called multi-step factoring, just because we had to do more. So we factored once, and then we had to factor a second time. So that's considered to be multi-step. Now the second type is a sum and difference of cubes, and I kind of have them bunched together because it's basically the same formula. Features, still a binomial, so it still only has two terms. Um, you could have a plus or a minus in this one. In a difference of squares, you can't have a plus. It has to be a minus. And then the, the final part to this, it has to be a perfect cube. Now your perfect cubes are like 1, uh, 8, 27, um, 64. Now these also follow a pattern. And I'm only going to show you the pattern once. But um, basically it breaks down into this. If you notice that you have perfect cubes in both terms, you're going to end up with a pattern that does this. Now really what you're going to do is you're just going to come up with the first one. The first one um, is how you come up with the second one, and then there's a, a pattern with the signs. When you look at your signs, you're going to notice the first set of parentheses has the same signs as the, uh, the original problem. The second uh, sign in the second set of parentheses is going to be opposite of the first sign, and then the last one is always going to be a plus. So I have two formulas, but you don't have to write it down twice. Just understand the only thing that changes is the signs. So since this is a minus, since this problem is a minus, that means this starts off as a minus, this goes to a plus, because these are always opposite of each other, and then this one is always a plus no matter what. So I'm going to show you how to use this formula. It's actually not that bad. So when we use the formula, we just need the first set of parentheses, and then we'll come up with the rest of the set after that. How do I come up with the first set? It's simple. All you do is take the cube root, and there is a cube root button on your calculator, but for the x, it's just x. For the 125, it's just 5. Now, based off of that, we follow the pattern up above. So in the first spot, it's basically a times a. Well, let me, let me label this so you're not confused. That's the a, and that's the b. So if we follow the pattern, a times a is x times x, so that's x squared. The middle one right here is a times b, so x times 5 is 5x. And then the last one is b times b. So 5 times 5 is 25. Last thing I do is go fill in the signs. So we use this uh, acronym, SOAP. S-O-A-P. Same, opposite, always positive. So same, plus, opposite, minus, always positive. There's our answer. And that pattern works on pluses and minuses. It doesn't really matter. So I'll show you this again. Come up with the first one. We use that to come up with the second one. So we cube root it. Cube root it. So we have x and 4. So the formula is a times a, so x squared. a times b, 4x b times b, 16. And then we use the SOAP acronym to fill in the signs. SOAP is minus for the same, opposite, always positive. Now, what if you have a problem that looks backwards, like the one right below it? It doesn't matter. Same rules apply. It's got two terms, it's got a minus, and it's got the cubes, perfect cubes. So we can translate it exactly the same way we did the last one. So that's 5. That's x. So the first one is a times a. So that's 25. a times b, 5x. b times b, x squared. And then we fill in the signs using the slope acronym. So same, opposite, always positive. Now the multi-step just means that when we try to cube root it, it doesn't work. So the 27, actually, let's see, does this one work? Uh, 27, yeah, this one actually does work. This is not a good example of multi-step factor. So 27 is 3, and then you have M, and then 125 is 5. Yeah, that's a horrible example. So what I was looking for was a GCF, but that one didn't have one. So uh, same thing as before, though. Uh, A times A, so 3M times 3M is 9M squared. A times B is 3M times 5, so that's 15M. And then 5 times 5 is 25. So acronym, same, opposite, always positive. Now I mentioned earlier that if you have exponents, there's a chance you could keep going. This second one will never keep going. It just doesn't work ever in this type of problem. Um, so the two types we talked about, uh, difference squares, that's the 
the one where they match, but one's plus, one's minus, and then you got the cubes. Anytime you have a cubes, you're going to have one parentheses that has three in it, because that, that, that problem has three in it. Uh, so we just follow the patterns, follow the formulas, and I'll put those up on the board um, so you can follow them. So it shouldn't be a problem.